first question is that in 1977, Giro, I was treating acute myeloid leukemia with two drugs, 7 and 3. In 2018, I'm using the same two drugs. Going forward, how do we change things for 2028 in your opinion? Well, um, fortunately, we are changing that little bit. You know, in two thousand, as you know, in two thousand seventeen, there was four drugs that were approved. You know, for uh, AML. You know, after uh, uh, I think you know three decades. You know, from the last one, and uh, there was um, in two thousand sixteen there was uh, a randomized clinical trials with the flat three ITD for flat three ITD patients, AML patients that was uh, positive. The first clinical trials, uh, the randomized phase three clinical trials positive in ML after a long, long time. So things are changing a little bit. The landscape on the drug um, and the armamentario that we have is changing. However, in my opinion, we still are not going to the root of the problem because a lot of these drugs are not curative drugs. A lot of these drugs really target what we call passenger mutations. And the problem is that we have a very few approach, therapy approach to the evil mothers of a whole of the AML blast that are the leukemia stem cells. And uh, yes, sure, we look at drugs that decrease the blast, that we kill the proliferating cells, but the problem is that we are not really think how to target effectively the leukemia stem cells and the niche, the microenvironment that support them. And I think if we want to really radically change our approach to ML, we really need to go back and really think about, rather than just the proliferating compartment of the leukemia, also the stemness of the leukemia stem cells and uh, the niche where they live. That would be a two-punch approach both in the mic for the microenvironment and the leukemia stem cells. Excellent. Very thoughtful answer. Thank you. My second question to you is that there have been 3.5 million papers published in cancer. In 2017 alone, 135,000 papers were published. But there is a staggering disconnect between great scientific insights and improve therapies by the bedside. What are we doing wrong, Dito? Well, I would, uh, this is a very difficult question because, uh, you know, it's uh, a multifaceted problem in the sense that um, publication, of course, is driven by, you know, uh, different interest, sometimes publication and the peer review uh, process is driven by the brand or the paper, you know, the, how the leading authors are uh, considered, how the leading institutions are considered, rightly so, because, you know, there is, uh, of course, uh, the reputation, the expertise that has been demonstrated that to wait in the opinion of uh, uh, um, new opinion that are put forward. However, you know, the peer review process need to be a bit more rigorous probably that we do. Um, the other thing, unfortunately, I would say that still in 2018, medicine is not an exact science. Um, I don't like when I hear the heart of medicine. The medicine should be an art, should not be an art, should be a science. I think a lot to do with the fact that we look at the problem from a qualitative aspect rather than a quantitative aspect. In my opinion, there is not enough math and uh, rigorosity in the experiment that we do and we propose in our paper. And I think, you know, this needs to be changed in order to really uh, try to approach, uh, again, a um, uh, problem from, uh, in a way that other uh, discipline in the sci or a scientific discipline will do. I think about physics, I think about you know, mathematics, I think about the things where uh, um, an answer is uh, 
exactly, exact, you know, is driven by certain type parameters. And I'm, I'm afraid that uh, in medicine still, still there is the artistic part that unfortunately confuses us a lot, in my opinion. My third question is that children respond to the same treatment better than adults, which seems to suggest that the biology is different in two diseases, but also the host is different. Now, since most cancer incidence increases with age, even having good therapy may not matter because the host's environment is decrepit. Suggestions? Well, you know, is cancer probably is a, a, um, a natural, um, you know, destination of what uh, is uh, our being human is. In other words, you know, is 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 a is a, a natural conclusion of a cycle of uh, of our organism. So it's not nice surprising that this will happen and uh, just the way that we are put together, in my opinion. Now, um, um, the question here is, uh, um, so probably we never will get rid of cancer in the sense of uh, 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 um, that never will happen even uh, with, uh, with our aging. It's part of our uh, the process of aging, in my opinion. So, but the problem, is, the issue is that to find the drugs and to find a way to prevent or early detection and to try effective drugs and in a way that we can uh, uh, provide uh, treatment even for uh, older patients and in a way that uh, the therapeutic index of the drug is such that we are, uh, um, the patient may benefit from them and uh, eliminate or basically minimize the toxicity. And again, we go back to the first question you know, we need to understand the biology of the disease much better in order to much better target, you know, the uh, malignant cells. Um, so to answer your question, you know, I don't think it's uh, hopeless. I think we have to accept um, that cancer probably is part of aging, and we have to deal with that uh, different, of course, that we do for a young patient. It's not part of my five questions, but since you said this, that cancer is part of aging, then the obvious next question is then, do you think once we understand and cure cancer, we'll be able to cure aging? I would say when we understand aging, we will be able to cure cancer. Great answer. I love that. <laughs> Giro, you have great experience and knowledge in the field. You've been taking care of hundreds of patients for so many years. You worked in the laboratory. You are a true translational researcher. You really have a grasp of what it's all about at both levels, which is very rare. Tell me if we gave you all the money and all the resources in the world to plan the future of cancer, what would it be? Um. So I, I go back again to something I said before in the fact that, you know, um, research medicine, cancer medicine had to be more rigorous. And we need that to, um, definitely is a biological science, but uh, it's a science. So this means that uh, a scientific approach that has been so um, effective in other disciplines could be imported, you know, also in uh, our uh, cancer research. So if I would have um, money to do that, I definitely would build a, uh, an institute of uh, integrated science where, uh, you know, I think about as an example, the LHC, you know, uh, the, acceler the particle accelerator that is uh, in uh, uh, in Switzerland, right, you know, where there are uh, thousand, thousand people that are there not to publish a paper, not to, you know, uh, try to find the next uh, Haro one, of, but really they work all together on a big, uh, on a big project and uh, with uh, the highest uh, possible technology, the sharpest mind, uh, the most enthusiastic people and work as a team. 
and that is, uh, and there is an engineer, there is a physicist, there are mathematicians, there are also some biologists, so it's a truly integrated environment. To me, integration is the key word, and, you know, so if I will have a money, I will build up a, a truly integrated uh, uh, scientific institute where people will work together without worry about funding, publication, or anything, but just with the, 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 the goal to solve the problem, cure cancer. Thank you, that's a great answer. Finally, it's a very philosophical question. Offering patients with advanced stage non-curable cancers, palliative but toxic treatment is a service or a disservice in the current therapeutic landscape? Oh, um, um, I feel very strong about this. This is a disservice. So to me, is uh, um, quality of life is uh, extremely important. Use of uh, establish realistic goal for the patients uh, is really important. And uh, in order to, and then we talk a lot about personalized medicine, right? Well, personalized medicine is not only matching a mutation with the drug; it's also personalized the approach to the patient need. So in my opinion is, uh, again, uh, in that particular situation, uh, quality of life is extremely important. So the use of uh, drugs that could provide some benefit um, is uh, without uh, toxicity will be eyes on my list rather than, you know, uh, just go with uh, uh, toxic uh, cytoreductive uh, chemotherapy that sure, you know, may look like may may do something in terms of uh, reducing the, the burden, of the cancer burden, but the truth is it uh, doesn't do much, you know, to, for the life for the patients. Yeah. Thank you very much. You've given very thoughtful and very unique answers to my questions. As a closing statement, would you like to add anything else that bothers you about cancer? Yeah, I, w I will say that uh, I feel uh, um, I feel very optimistic for the future. You know, I see I see a lot of the you know the concept the idea that we talk in the last ten minutes. Uh, um, you know, surfacing, and uh, there are uh, I will say that uh, there is more and more. Uh, um, um, rigorosity in the science, there is more and more uh, integration with the other scientific discipline. And uh, I think it's uh, really important that uh, the patient, the public, uh, understand better what is the problem. You know, I, I really, really like the fact that when the patient come to see me, they are prepared. You know, they already have read everything they could about the cancer. They make much uh, the cancer they have. That make much easier for me to explain you know, things and what I want to accomplish. And uh, if uh, I told them all the time, you know, I'm, uh, if you don't understand what I'm telling you, mean that, you know, I'm not, uh, either the idea is a bad idea or uh, I'm not explaining good enough because usually people uh, that come today, these days, you know, those days, you know, everybody uh, come very prepared, you know. So it's, uh, it's important to have a very good dialogue and, uh, I, so I, I, I think, you know, is, uh, as a team approach, I'm very hopeful for the future, I think, uh, and we'll see some good results. Um, uh, definitely we need to be a little bit sharper in terms of what, uh, how we pose the problem. We, you know, as a scientist, how we pose the problem, how we try to solve that. Do you think in your lifetime we will have a cure for acute myeloid leukemia besides transplant? Um, well, depend how long I will live. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, um, probably yes, but only for some the molecular subtype of AML. You know, AML again is uh, a constellation of uh, entities of diseases. Um, is a lot to do with uh, what are. Uh, the molecular uh, subtypes, um, what is the host. And uh, so um, for some, I will say, if I think about APL, um, core binding factors, you know, I, I, I 
think we are going in the right directions. Um, and again, those are the sample of uh, subtype of ML where there was a lot of, um, uh, there was a lot of knowledge in terms of the molecular uh, uh, mechanism leading to the disease and uh, how to approach from a therapeutic standpoint. And so I think for some will be important, especially for those uh, mutations that uh, um, may, um, may be a, a driver mutations, but at the same time the stemness of uh, uh, the primitive cells are not that strong. We are able to intervene in a way to uh, 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 drive a clone to exosion. Uh, for others, I think about uh, complex karyotype ML, maybe the answer would be is much more complicated than we think. Thank you very much sure. for your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much.